Okay, welcome back to another vid. It's a pickup vid. First one for just over one month. So that's about time, isn't it, for a pickup vid? One, one every month. It's a decent ratio. So I've got two for the Atari ST, three for the 360, one for the PlayStation 1. But more impressively, I kind of point to there, you can't even see them. Trust me. Five PAL, obviously, Super Nintendo games. Brand new year, really getting back into the Super Nintendo. I've threatened to do it for many years, put it that way, but it's taken me a long, long time. And I've, you know, if you go back like maybe a year and a half, two years ago, uh, three years ago maybe, I started to buy American games. Now, I will still grab the odd American game here and there, but in terms of nostalgia, it just has to be pal. I've touched upon it before. I'm not going to do it in this vid. I'll save that for, for maybe the next vid or future vids, I should say. But yeah, uh, pal for me, that's what ticks all the boxes. But I will still get the odd... American game here and there, whether it's boxed, whether it's a loose cart, not really bothered. But the PAL games have to be boxed. They have to be in good condition. My stipulations are uh, good condition, and good condition to me is like kind of a 7 out of 10 minimum, really, or at least 7 out of 10 as to how it looks on eBay. Uh, because sometimes people advertise it as great, and then you get it, and you're like, that is rubbish. But if it looks decent, and I'll ask a few questions before as well, and uh, yes, kind of 7 out of 10. So that's the first kind of stipulation. And also the price has got to be right, you know, and by right, I don't necessarily mean cheap. I don't mind paying a bit more or even a lot more for something which is in really good condition. So let's say there's a battered, con uh, a battered condition copy of uh, Street Fighter 2, for example, and they want 10 quid for it. But a mint copy or a brilliant copy, um, condition copy, let's say is 40, I'll pay 40. I, I, I'm not that bothered. The price doesn't bother me. I'm not made of money. Obviously, but I want the game in good condition. I want the box in good condition. If it's buggered, not interested. The odd bit of kind of scuffage here and there, it's kind of to be expected a little bit. Um, a little bit of a crease to be expected. Uh, bad condition, thanks but no thanks. But anyway, let's start off with the... Oh, by the way, in, you won't be able to see, unfortunately and annoyingly, but in the background over there, again, because this reflection, uh, the mirrored kind of image... Monkey Island, Secret Monkey Island on the 360. Sorry. Well, yeah, it's, technically it's a 360, but I'm playing it through the Xbox One. And what you can't really see because of the light, this is the modern version. But if on the controller you press the, I guess that's the select button. Can you see it now? There you go. It switches to the old school version. And this is the one that I remember, like on the ST and the Amiga. I think it was on the PC as well. And moving it around. All that kind of, and look, it's exactly the same, but basically a modernised version. And it looks really, really good. And in fact, even going back to the old version, it still looks all right. I think it does anyway. So, um, yeah, really pleased to be getting back into that. I've had this game for years and years and years, but um, not really played it too much. And if you can hear some seagulls in the background, it's from the game. It's not, I haven't got them in the room or anything. I'm not a madman. So, yeah, let's start off with the two Atari ST games, and then we'll move on to... Uh, 360, the one PS1 game, and then we'll finish with the Super Nintendo. The holy grail um, of consoles, arguably. So yeah, the first game on the ST, it's a movie tie-in. If anyone's around about my age, you'll remember, you know, the 8 and the 16-bit era was uh, a great era in regards to movie tie-ins. If there was a film, a Hollywood film out, the chances are there was going to be a game released. And this is no different, but I kind of, I'm smiling and grinning here because it's a cheesy movie. It's a bit of a cheesy game, but I, I like it in a in a corny, cheesy way. Without um, further ado, it's uh, Hudson Hawk, Bruce Willis, and Hudson Hawk. So there he is, loving himself. Look at that man alive. Um, bit of spine action going on there. Made by Ocean. I love that old um, Ocean logo. It looks absolutely brilliant. There it is again. And on the back, if you can work it out, um, you can probably see there. There's some stills from the movie. Uh, on the left hand side and then at the bottom there we've got some screenshots. I think they're from like a, a multiple of um, systems there. It looks like maybe Spectrum, it could be maybe an Amstrad or a Commodore 64 and maybe it's an ST or Amiga version. But yeah, it's basically a platform game. That's what it is. It's not amazing, but it's one I used to have as a kid and I'm glad to get it back. And it was like a quid, you know, or whatever it was. So I, I don't mind um, obviously paying that kind of money. And from the same seller, because it's always wise, especially when you're buying abroad um, or buying from overseas, to buy you know a couple of games or more. And I don't know if you just saw it there. I kind of just about showed the edge. There we go. There it is again. 
It's Dynamite Ducks. Again, kind of a, sort of, not really a platform game, more of a, a cartoony side-scroller. Uh, it's essentially sort of a beat-em-up, in a way. Um, very colourful, very bright. The controls are all right. You know, it's not a game I would race to play, but it's one I used to have, one of many I used to have. In fact, actually a friend had it, but I've got memories uh, of playing it around their house. And um, yeah, it's an Atari ST game. It's from the early 90s, uh, late 80s, early 90s. So I'm, I'm a fan of it straight away. 1989. So there we are. And if you, again, you probably don't want to see, or maybe you do. And Activision as well. Still knocking about all these years later. So really pleased to get that one. I've played it. It's like I say, it's okay. It's not amazing. It's not going to be something which as soon as I finish making this vid, I'm going to put on. I've got to play Dynamite Ducks. Obviously not. But it's one which I can stick up on these shelves up here where all my ST and Amiga games are. And, uh, and it's, it's nice. I walk into this room and it just reminds me of... Um, the late 80s and early 90s in a, in a weird way, so it's good. Right, let's move on to the three Xbox 360 games. The first one is uh, a repurchase, but it's not one which I just sold recently and I've just bought it back straight away. This is one I must have got rid of about four years ago. So um, I had a big clear out of games, sold a lot of 360 stuff, uh, sold a lot of PS3 stuff, and then obviously as the years go by you start accumulating it all yet again. Uh, but I'm pleased to get this, and uh, yeah, let's show you what it is and we'll talk about it. It's Ridge Racer 6. This is actually an Xbox 360 exclusive, so uh, which is interesting because Ridge Racer 7 is a PlayStation 3 exclusive. So I'm not quite sure why they did that, um, why they didn't just release them both on both systems. Now the thing about this game, because it had been a few years since I played it and I stuck it on last night very briefly... It's decent, but that's all it is, for me anyway. Maybe once I get to grips with it, I'll really like it. Um, but I was expecting it first time round, so going back quite a few years when it came out, I remember being disappointed because I was expecting it to be basically to be like uh, exactly like Ridge Racer on the PS1, but it isn't. It's much more reliant on drifting, and exaggerated drifting at that, very much arcade style, and using your Nitro Boost which you get as a result of drifting around pretty much every corner. So, yeah, the game is very, very heavily reliant on drifting and nitros, and that's not really, for me, what I'm into. I'm not really into that kind of thing. I thought it would be a straight-up racing game, uh, like I say, akin to Ridge Racer on the PS1 from 95. But it isn't. But it's still a decent game. It's a decent game, uh, and for the record, Ridge Racer 7 on the PS3, like I say, the PS3 exclusive, it's exactly the same in the sense that it's reliant on drifting and nitros. So maybe a turn for the series, which um, I'm not particularly keen on, in all honesty. But for the sake of 5 or $6, I don't mind. I'm pretty, pretty happy to get it. And I'll persevere with it, and I might even get to appreciate it and like it a lot more than I currently do. But it's all right. I'm not going to slag it off. Oh, and by the way, that'll keep happening. If I... Where's the controller? The screen will keep going off to the main menu. Not that you care, but it kind of bothers me. Um, so, yeah, next up on the 360, if I'm pronouncing this right, it's Dodonpachi Resurrection, and this is the Deluxe Edition. I don't know if there was a special edition and a standard edition, but, um, yeah, it's basically one of those, you know, bullet hell games, as they're called. And I've got a few of these. Picked up one or two lately. And it's decent. The one thing I've got to say about these games is I'm not particularly good at them, but I do enjoy them. But what I find, unless there's an option, uh, you know, in the um, in the options, an option in the options, in the in the menu screen, I guess option in in the options screen works kind of. But unless there's a way of turning off infinite continues, then well, that's what you get, infinite continues. So it's really easy to finish the game. You know, it's not like you get three lives or five lives, which would be mega tough. You know, it just seems like you can just go through hundreds upon hundreds of lives and you will finish the game. So um, that seems, in my experiences, to be the way when it comes to these kind of bullet hell games. So, yeah, that's that game. Anyway, I know it's quite well regarded by um, shooter fans, shoot up fans, shmup fans, whatever you want to call it. Uh, I'm a very casual shooter fan, so it's all right. It just kind of plays and looks like the others to me. But well, that's not a negative thing. I do like it. It's pretty good. I'm just rubbish at it. And then last but not least on the 360 is a game which I remember seeing uh, a guy called Sean Sidious, if anyone remembers Sean. He's still knocking about on like Twitter, but um, 
YouTube he knocked on the head a, a long, long time ago. But for whatever reason, I remember him doing this uh, video to this game, which I guess was on the PS3. I can't quite remember that bit. I think it was. And he paid full whack for it. Like a few days of it coming out, he did a gameplay. And it didn't, here's the funny thing, it didn't really appeal to me at the, at the time. Because I remember looking at it and thinking, well, it's a hack and slash game, kind of free roaming. Uh, the franchise is something I'm not really that bothered about. There's one or two games I quite like. But uh, I don't know. I th well, I picked it up recently because it was $3. But I didn't pick it up, you know, again, back in the day because the genre didn't really appeal to me. But for $3, I don't, mean taking a, I don't mind taking a punt. And it's Metal Gear Uprising. No, it isn't. It's Metal Gear Revengeance. Jesus. So, um, yeah, Revengeance on the uh, on the 360. Hack and Slash, um, anime kind of thing. Slightly anime, is it fair to say anime? Kind of, I guess. I don't know what I'm talking about. I wish I'd never even showed it. But I'm going to give it a try. And then on the PS1, now this is a... Um, this is actually quite an uncommon game, but it goes for like a few quid at best. And when you see it, you'll realise why. It's World Cup Golf, PAL PlayStation 1. But, for whatever reason, it's one of those games which is really uncommon, made by US Gold. And I love the back as well. World Cup Golf is the most playable, realistic, and visually stunning golf game ever produced. It really isn't. I mean, I'm looking at the back, and to be fair, it looks okay in a very, you know, mid to late 90s way. But, um, yeah, it's, uh, it's not great. 1995. Now, like I say, it's quite uncommon. But if you do get a chance to buy it, you're probably not going to be paying more than like a fiver for it. At least that was the, the going rate the last time I looked. But have a look on eBay, honestly. Well, I say honestly, but there's probably not going to be many copies available because it's, for whatever reason, one of those games which is quite uncommon. I'm trying to put these SNES games up. Can you see them? You can't. So this is really why I wanted to make the vid. Those are just kind of extras. The Super Nintendo is something from this year onwards, 2017 onwards, that I'm going to seriously get into. I've kind of, you know, pissed around a little bit for many, many years, buying one or two games here and there. You know, come the start of a brand new year in 2016, 15, 14, you name it, I've always said, right, this is going to be the year I'm going to buy my Super Nintendo games back, uh, one by one. Uh, the ones I used to have, the ones that my friends used to have, the ones that I wanted but never got around to playing, the ones which maybe I'm discovering for the first time. You know, I really want to get back into the system. And if you watch the video that I did, I bought... You can see the system behind me there. There it is down there, that second shelf um, at the back there. PAL system. I bought back... I uh, uh, What was it? The... What the hell did you call it? The action pack. It was the one with the super scope, because that's the one I had at Christmas 1992. And I bought it back. Like I say, it would have been on a pickup video about two years... Maybe three? Two or three years ago, whenever it was. But I can't use the super scope because of the, the refresh rate, you know, the 50, 60 megahertz, all that kind of stuff on modern televisions. What I can do, which I'm not going to be doing anytime soon, is I could import a PAL CRT, but that'll be bloody expensive, and I don't really want to do that. It's a last resort. So, um, but yeah, so I've got the Super Nintendo system back, the one I used to have as a kid. I absolutely love it. The box is in the other room in there. I'm kind of thinking of putting it out somewhere on, like, a you know, display, but... Who cares? Who's going to see it? So I might not do that. Um, but more importantly, I've got the system, but more importantly, I want to get back into the games, and I'm starting to. So I've got five here. The first one up is going to sound cheesy. You, when I show you this, you're going to think, is that some kind of like an equivalent to Shaq Fu on the Mega Drive? Maybe, did it come out in the SNES as well? Definitely the Mega Drive. Um, and Shaq Fu is notoriously poor. It's a bit of a lame game. But believe it or not, this is actually quite decent. And also, it's very uncommon. The PAL English version, very uncommon. And I don't even want to put a price on it because who knows? It, because it's quite rare. It could go for a lot of money or it may not. But that game, which is actually decent, which you're going to think is rubbish, is Michael Jordan, Chaos in the Windy City. If you look at uh, Michael there, loving it. His face, very proud man there, holding his, uh, holding his balls, I was going to say. Technically he is. One with fire and the other which is um, kind of ice, I guess. So this is basically a platform game. But it, it's really good. It's decent. It works. It's got a lot of uh, new additions to the genre. A lot of strange kind of wacky 
um, things he tries to pull off and does quite well. What I'm, what I plan on doing, it's, it's all very well talking the talk, but what I want to do is I want to do gameplay videos for all these SNES games that I buy. But, um, <laughs> you know, that could be a long time before I actually do that. But with that said, there's one of these games in mind. It might be the last game which I'm going to show. I think I'm going to do a gameplay video for that soon. I don't want to put a, like, a day on it or I'd say it's going to be next week or next month. It'll be soon. It could be this month. It could be next, whenever. But I will do it very, very shortly. Um, but in an ideal world, like I said, I'd like to do a gameplay video for all the SNES games. Maybe at the start of the vid, I could do something like, you know, uh, show the sides and the box and inside and all that kind of stuff for those who care. And then do a gameplay. I could do maybe some live commentary or just some kind of pre-recorded commentary. And then maybe at the end, I could do a bit of a summing up. That's what I'm thinking of doing. Um, where maybe I can come back on cam and you know hold it up and talk about it. Uh, we'll see, but that's kind of what I intend to do. But yeah, anyway, so this is actually, like I say, a really uncommon game. So I don't want to put a price on it, but it's, it's decent. If you get an opportunity, check it out. Pete Snestastic did a gameplay video of this, which I was watching two or three weeks back, whenever it was. I watched it first time round when he uploaded it, a good few years ago now. But I watched it the other night, and um, I think Pete likes it as well, from memory. I stand corrected on that. But uh, but I do. I like it. It's, it's good. It's good, and it really surprised me, because I genuinely thought it would be another Shaq Fu, uh, like a very cheap kind of sports movie kind of tie-in thing. But it's good. Well, yeah, it's good, decent to good. Next up is a game which is a bit of a classic, and uh, it's really difficult as well. It still looks really, really good, it's part of a trilogy on the SNES, and it's Donkey Kong Country. Again, sorry if you can't see anything here. This one comes with the uh, the CD. Um, what's it called? Go Ape, I think. So, with Primal Scream, uh, Oasis, St. Etienne, Radiohead, Terrorvision, the Boo Radleys, uh, Populate Itself, and Ride. So, some decent bands there. One or two questionable ones as well. I'm not going to mention Primal Scream. And my uncle's cousin, who was the drummer, not going to mention it. Not going to mention it. But, um, yeah, in pretty decent condition. There's a couple of nicks. But did I say, going back five, ten minutes, when it comes to uh, Super Nintendo, what I want to do, in fact, what I am doing, is I'm basically biding my time. And if there's a game that it's in poor condition, I'm just not going to get it. I'm really not. It's as simple as that. It's got to be in what I consider good condition, which is kind of a seven out of 10. And again, these kind of the spines, you may not be able to see because the, the, the light's pretty dark, but green on this one, it was kind of a, a black standard on the other. But it just adds to it, you know, the different colours, the variety. They look so much better than the American ones, which over the years, you know, because I've been in America not far off a decade now, so I'm kind of used to the American spines. And I've got a few American games and I'll continue to buy the odd one here and there. But, um, for me, those multicoloured PAL Super Nintendo spines look amazing. They just scream nostalgia. Early 90s, that's, they just shout it out every time I see it. And it, it means everything when it comes to nostalgia. Right, enough of that. Next up is a game I used to have on the... I probably had it on the 8-bit machines, to be honest. But the one I really remember it from is the Atari ST. And then latterly, uh, latterly the Amiga as well. But this is obviously the Super Nintendo version. Another one which is really uncommon to get, the English version. You can see, you know, with PAL versions, you've got to remember you get like French versions, German, Spanish, Italian, um, Australian, um, British, of course. To get the British English language version of this game is quite uncommon. And it probably goes for around about, on average around about 150 quid, and I've seen it go up to like 300 quid. I guess it depends on the condition, and also is there like a bidding war going on where certain people, some people really, really want it. Uh, there's a number of factors. I was lucky enough to get this. I still paid a fair amount of money for it. It was, I think, around about 80, 85 quid. So a lot of money, a lot of money. And to date, the most expensive Super Nintendo game I've bought. That's including shipping, to be fair. But when I looked at sold items... Uh, sold listings for this game and having previously tracked it in you know months gone by like I say I've seen it going for up to two three hundred quid which is outrageous uh, and on average you're looking at 150 175 so I got it on a bite now best offer um, no sorry I tell a lie someone had listed it with a bite now and I contacted them outside of 
or through eBay and said, would you be prepared to sell it outside of eBay? Um, if you, you, you know, you'll save fees and all that kind of stuff. And they said, all right, make me an offer. And I did. And they accepted it, which I was a bit suspicious about, to be honest. But I don't think they knew what they were selling. I didn't really get that vibe at all. I looked at other items they were selling, not a lot of video game stuff. So maybe it was someone who just had it, didn't know, and they were just delighted just to get rid of it. Um, I don't know. Anyway, it's a real game, by the way. It's not a fake. Uh, I know that's a big problem when it comes to reproduction games and carts and boxes. This is real. It's legit. If it wasn't, I wouldn't be showing it, showing it off. I wouldn't be buying it. So anyway, enough of the suspense. Bloody hell. It's Super Double Dragon. Super Double Dragon. I mean, Double Dragon is a legendary game. And I don't know if anyone else has uh, noticed recently, but I think they've announced Double Dragon 4 as a PS4 exclusive. I think it may be a downloadable game only, though. And I did have a look at it, and it's more of like a hybrid, old-fashioned retro version. It's not like a souped-up modern one, from what I could work out. It looks okay, but to be perfectly honest, um, I may pick it up. I'm sure I will eventually, but I, I didn't look... I was excited when I heard about it, but when I watched the vid, I thought... Eh, it looks all right. It just looked like a NES game, an 8-bit NES game, quite frankly, which is not a bad thing, but I'm just saying, I was hoping for like a 16-bit Super Nintendo, Mega Drive, ST, Amiga kind of thing, and it, it doesn't look like that um, unless they um, change it or unless there's further levels in the game where it is like that. But anyway, by the by. Uh, so this is in brilliant condition. This is in one of those kind of Sentinel uh, cases, and I put it on briefly, probably for about 20, 25 minutes. I've got to be honest, my first impressions, just my first impressions, apologies if it's really dark, by the way. Um, I've just kind of noticed this screen is just um, definitely getting darker. Not a lot I can do about that. It's still the winter. But yeah, put it on for about 20, 25 minutes, give or take. It's good. It's decent. It didn't blow me away. I was hoping it would be like a, um, a final fight or a rival turf, or a street of rage with big sprites. They're much smaller than that. Um, it's not a bad thing. It's bright. It's colourful. I like the look of it. It's nostalgia. It's got that nostalgic 2D um, side-scrolling look to it, because that's what it is, after all. But it's at a first play, that's all it was for 20, 25 minutes. I didn't think it was amazing, but I thought it was all right, and I am looking forward to getting into it. Delighted to have it. I'm just saying, I, I thought it would be maybe a little bit better first time round than what it was. Oh, lighting's got a little bit better there, I think. Okay, two more. Um, the first up, now, this is, again, a very nostalgic game to me, but oddly enough, way more nostalgic to me on the Mega Drive. And I've got to be honest, in my opinion, and it is a game of opinions, but in my opinion, excuse me, the, um, the Mega Drive version is much better. It's much better, but this, this still is a good version. And it's Aladdin. And again, look at the spines with the green. I mean, that's amazing. Now, to be fair, to be fair, the front, the sides, the back, it's all in good condition. But on the, well, sorry, the sides, there's a little bit of sticker damage. And the way it is on both sides, it looks like it was caused by the um, the cling film or the, the, uh, the wrapping, the original wrapping. And maybe it was on for too long and someone, there's a bit of glue there or something maybe. So it's slightly come away on the corners. It's not bad, all in all, and I got it for a good price. Everything else is in brilliant condition, the outside of the box, the inside. Um, but yeah, but my memories of this are the Mega Drive version, getting it on Christmas Day in 1993. But what I love about the SNES and the Mega Drive is what you used to get quite a lot back then, in fact a heck of a lot, is you'd have the same game, like Aladdin on the Mega Drive, Aladdin on the SNES, uh, but basically, they were released at the same time, but they were essentially different games, different experiences, different levels, different end bosses, uh, different uh, routes and maps within the game. There was a justification for having the SNES version and the Mega Drive version, which I have. And you can play them both and not think, oh, I've played this before. It's, very, it's a very different experience. But I've got to be honest, like I say, for me, the better game is the Mega Drive, but it's going to come down to a game of opinions, isn't it? This is still good, it's bright, it seems on a first playthrough uh, that it's a lot more colourful on the uh, on the Super Nintendo, and a little bit more, um, I, I don't know, slightly grittier? I, I don't know, it, it's not, something about it, it doesn't seem as polished, it, even though it's more colourful, it doesn't seem overall as polished 
as the Mega Drive version, which seemed more kind of arcadey than that version, the SNES version. But I, I don't know. I'd have to I'd have to play the SNES one a little bit more, and then maybe go back to the Mega Drive one, and I'll probably have more of a of an opinion of it then. But without question, for me, the Mega Drive version is the better version. But I do still like the SNES version. And then last but not least, again, this is quite a relatively uncommon game. Probably goes for around about 50, 60, 70 quid. Could be a little bit more, again, depending on the condition. And in the future, I can see this going for more than what it currently goes for now. So if you see it and you're a PAL collector or a buyer of Super Nintendo games, um, maybe think about picking it up. But I've got to be honest, it's fun. I'm enjoying it. But it is 100%, 100% a poor man's contra, a poor man's contra, and even a poor man's realm. And it's very similar to realm in a way. If anyone remembers uh, realm, I actually did a gameplay for it about three, four, five years ago on the American Super Nintendo. And it's, it's a good game, uh, but in a way, I think I may have said that was a poor man's contra. This is, this is a poor man's realm then, I guess. But it's still decent. There's a lot of good ideas they've got. And that game, I keep, oh, this bloody build-up, you probably saw it there. It's called Time Slip. So it's a side-scrolling shooter with, um, I was going to say platform elements to a degree. It's essentially a shooter. Um, can you work it out on the back with the glare? See, it looks very reminiscent and similar to uh, to Contra there on the back. But it's, yeah, it's a decent, it's a, is it a decent? I feel kind of generous saying decent. It's an okay game, but if you love Contra and you spend a fair bit of money on this, 50, 60, 70 quid, and you're expecting it to be like Contra or Super Pro Protector in PAL regions, you're going to be disappointed. It really isn't. There's some real kind of um, silly uh, enemies on there. Does, do you, anyone remember these things? I think late 80s are like muscle men with these kind of like pink little things, like big arms. And they were like kind of little monsters. And those are in the game. Or well, that's what they look like anyway. And every time, I think it's either five or six come out of the gate. So every single time, it's never one or two or three. It's always either five or six. So you know what's going to happen. And there's a lot of repetitiveness through the levels. Um, a couple of the end bosses are quite tricky uh, so far in my experience. But overall, um, it's, not, it's not an amazing game. But because I love that genre, the side-scrolling shooter mixed with a bit of platforming, uh, I, I kind of, I've got to cut it some slack. I have to because I love that genre. So, um, yeah, it, it's all right, but that's all it is. And this is the game, which I think I was kind of mentioning a, a while back, where I may do a gameplay video of this. I may do, because this is probably the one I've played more of than the others uh, within this last week. So I've played it a fair bit. I've not finished the game. Probably got maybe halfway through. It's decent, but it's certainly not amazing. Anyway, so I'm going to wrap it up. Uh, that's my games that I've picked up this last month or so. Until my next vid, which will probably be Thursday, a Thursday drive, maybe this week or next week, we'll see. Then thanks, oh, stumble over my words. Thanks for watching. See you later. Made it all the way to the end and balls that up. See you later. Take it easy.